Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And normally, when you know I come on here, it's always positive news. But this particular situation is, hmm. um, if you guys haven't heard already, um, pretty sure you have because you guys, Cowboy fans, are always on it. Um, Travis Frederick retired. Yep, our starting center, Travis Frederick. Announced that he retired from the NFL um, at only 29 years old. Now, you know, we all know why. And, you know, I'm going to get in a little bit on, you know, some of the things that I have talked about in the past when it came to him and things of that nature. But, you know, him being a former first-round pick for us and, you know, just being named All-Pro and being just a dominant one of the – Arguably one of the best centers in the league, if not the center, best center in the league. Um, with the five Pro Bowls out of the six years that he played. And look, you know, this is going into his seventh year. He just said, hey, it's time to put it up. And he said he thought long and hard about it. And, you know, being a part of Dallas Cowboys was, was special to him. And being with Tyron and, and Zach Martin and Lyle Collins. And, you know, those, those were his guys. You know, all these are the guys that, he was in the trenches with, you know, like the, when you look at the Dallas Cowboys line and you look at the Pro Bowl, like the, he was one of the top three that always went to the Pro Bowl. Um, so he ties Andre Gerard, which are, is our former center. Those of you didn't know who Andre Gerard is, only the true Cowboy fans know. Um, he ties him with the most Pro Bowls by a center in uh, franchise history. So. You know, I can only say good things about Travis Frederick, a family man, a wife with two two kids, and, you know, always been a stand-up guy and always about the team and always speaking positive. And, you know, when he first got the, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, the uh, Ghislaine Barre syndrome, when he first got it, um, you know, I didn't know what it was until I did my research on it. So basically, if you don't know what it is by now, it's an autoimmune system that basically um, it, it confuses your body. and Your body basically attacks its own um, nervous system. So you have symptoms like something like, you know, when a player gets a stinger or like a tingly feeling or they lose feeling altogether in certain parts of their body. That's what it's like. So there's no cure for this disease. Once you have it, everybody that has it, I know some of my subscribers had it because I know I talked to some people um, before when this news first broke when he had it. I know somebody somebody said they had it. Somebody said that, you know, one of their wives or something had it. Um, but, you know, those of you that, that, that know somebody that's close to you, you know what I'm talking about. But, you know, for a person that has a regular nine to five job, it's okay. Not saying it's, you know, it's never okay for anybody to have it, but, you know, when you have a nine to five job, you know, you're, especially if you're an office person, like, you know, you, you can still work with this type of disease or whatever. Like it's not, you know, it, it's, it's, life is hard with it. Yes. But, you know, when you're a football player and have it, you can't do your job because your body fails you like you know as an offensive lineman your complete job is to block 300 pound men coming at you trying to attack your quarterback now you know it can go dormant but it could come back at any time and when it comes back it comes back in full force and you can't control it there's nothing you can do about it it's not like you could just sit out and it heal it's not like a like a um a hamstring injury or anything like that. This is something that will come and go anytime it wants to. And I guess he just realized that, hey, if I can't play to the top, to the best of my ability, I need to go ahead and retire right now because I don't want to um, make my team suffer because I'm not playing the best I can. Now, granted, Last season, he played pretty well. You know, he still went to the Pro Bowl um, even after coming back from a whole year not playing. Now, the crazy thing about it is it's like, you know, Travis Frederick is a – you never know. Like, you know, he, he always – he never made excuses. But when he did say that, hey, I'm not 100%, you got to believe him. 
So, you know, I don't know what it's like personally, but I can only imagine, you know, when you can't lift up your arm on certain days or if you don't have the same energy or, or, or effort to push, you know, that's how Antoine Woods got on this team in the first place. You know, when, when he battled with Travis Frederick and that's how they found out about it when he first got that stinger, when he beat him and, and it's just crazy. Um, that's how, that, that's cr crazy how we found out about it, but. Um, and he said that when he first got it, he was scared and afraid. And I can imagine, you know, something having uh, a disease like that is is really, you know, where it attacks your where your body attacks itself. I mean, that's 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 just crazy. Now, um, Charles Frederick will definitely be missed on this team. And I know I can speak for every Cowboy fan when I say that is a that is a L, that is a loss. But I'm more concerned with him going forward in his future. I'm not mad. I'm not mad that he's retiring. Um, as a true fan, I can say that we've had great, you know, some of the great years with him and he needs to look out for his future and what's best for him and his family right now. And if he feels like this is coming back and it's, you know, coming back from being dormant and it's going to affect him this season and he's going to be out anyway, why not? I mean, he just, at this point, he just had to walk away from football. He had, even though his career was cut short, he had a hell of a time with the Dallas Cowboys. Again, he made it to five Pro Bowls, um, all pro, you know, all the highest accolades that you can get, you know. And again, a stand-up guy, a guy that's going to be well-respected. Now, I don't know if he played enough years to be a Hall of Famer. I don't think so, but... Um, he'll definitely be in the Cowboys ring of honor. Definitely that. If nothing else, definitely Jerry Jones is going to take care of his boys. And, and I'm pretty sure he'll still be, still be there for the Dallas Cowboys and things and be on the sideline and, you know, uh, talk to everybody and things of that nature. So, um, he'll still be around, but you know, I, you just got to pray for him and his family and things of that nature. So again, I don't fault him for making this decision on retiring. It's, it's the best thing for him and, you know, you know, having something like that, you know, you don't want to leave a bad mark on your team or anything like that. So, you know, for his own health and safety, he made the best decision for himself. Now, with him retiring, you know, randomly like this and out of nowhere, thank God the Cowboys re-signed Joe Looney, right? Because who's going to be your backup? Now, there's Connor McGovern. Connor McGovern was a center when he was in college. Now, I don't think he's better than Joe Looney because Joe Looney, let, let's let's be honest, Joe Looney is not Travis Frederick, and I'm not saying that. He's not Travis Frederick. But it wasn't a tremendous drop-off. It wasn't too bad. He played pretty well um, the season before when Travis Frederick was out the year when he first got the, the disease. Um, you got to admit that um, Joe Looney did his thing. And because Joe Looney had that starting experience, he's more than likely the – not say that he's going to get get the starting position, but as of right now, I'm pretty sure that in training camp, they're going to um, split reps between him and Connor McGovern and see which one is better at that center position. Because again, that center position is important. And, and I'm glad that I remember this to, to say, because those of you that never played football before that doesn't understand, like the center normally makes the line calls. Normally is the leader outside of the quarterback on the offensive line. The center is the one that does the, the, the calls, the you know, and helps the quarterback with the snap counts and things of that nature. So if you have a great center like that, that knows and can read, and so, sometimes um, the center is there to read some of the stuff that the defense, the front line of the defense is in front of you is doing as well. Travis Frederick has done those things. Now, Joe Looney is not, as good in that category as Travis Frederick was, but you know, let's let's be honest. A lot of centers in the league aren't aren't that great at that type of thing. But um, the fact that you know um, you can say that that Travis Frederick was the leader of that offensive line, it's definitely a big blow to the Dallas Cowboys offense, and it's sad to see him go. But I like the fact that he did this now because. He was looking out for his future, and as a fan, I can't be selfish and be like, oh, it's he. no, he shouldn't retire. No, he's doing what he needs to do for him and, you know, for his future and his health and his safety and everything of that nature. Now, he um, said his long goodbyes and his written statement. I had it somewhere, but I, I 
but you guys can see it online. Um, it's posted everywhere. But stand up guy, love me some Travis Frederick. I know all of you guys as well. Um, but I think Joe Looney would be a good replacement for him, like I said, because he's done it before. Um, but I'm pretty sure that when they when it comes to OTAs and training camp, they're gonna him and Connor McGovern are gonna battle for that starting center spot. So let me know what you guys think about it. It's really sad. It really is. Um, but you know. We always try to understand things for in other people's standpoint, even though we didn't go through that certain thing. You can't, you can only imagine what it's like, because, but you don't know exactly because you, you don't have it or you're not going through that same thing that that individual is. But, you know, shout out to Travis Frederick and um, God bless him and all prayers go up to him and his family. Um, and him making him retire was a good choice for him, you know, and. We can't be selfish as a base, and but it, it is it going to be a, a loss? Hell yes, it's definitely going to be a loss. But the Dallas Cowboys a bounce back. Like I said, they did get insurance policy because they did resign Joe Looney. They got Connor McGovern. You got Brandon Knight. You got three centers right there. Um, because remember Brandon Knight is still on the team, and you know he showed a little bit of promise too. So you know some of these backups, if they get chances to actually get first team reps. You know, we can see what they can do in training camp. And again, there's still the draft. You can still get a guard center in a, in a draft or whatever um, just for depth purposes because um, we're definitely going to need it. So let me know what you guys think about the Charles Frederick. Definitely a blow to the team and the offense and things of that nature. But, you know, um, he had to do what he had to do. But I, I don't know if he's eligible to be a Hall of Famer or whatever because his career is short. But definitely in the ring of honor. Um, in the future, Jerry Jones, make it happen, brother. You gotta, re you gotta respect that, and you gotta um give back to the players that been loyal to you during their tenure. So, with that being said, y'all, thanks again, all my subscribers. Appreciate you guys. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit tap that notification bell, so you get this content from your boy, it's your boy E2 Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon.